Hello everyone, my name is Putty and welcome back for another episode of Pull Out Noche and Fantamiento, another set of Oli recordings. We have three TV shows left to go before a big season finale, double bill, Hall of Fame ceremony followed up by a, a glorious TV special. I've got, I've spent the last couple of minutes planning out the next couple of weeks uh, on paper and hopefully we have everything planned out and I'll be able to bring life to it through the booking. Uh, do I remember everything tonight? I got, yeah, I don't remember everything I need to. It's cool. So, uh, I won't go into that because that's spoilers, but we will do Metal, and we'll try and get Phoenix 4 and Hijo Meth uh, Del Mephisto to get along. Nope. Alright then. Cool. That's fine. That's okay. Oh, one thing I should mention before we go on is I've kind of um, cleaned up everything. So, stables, we've added a description to Tress Phoenix, and we've also added a new stable, which is La Hermandad Oscura which is Pesadilla's little group, and I've specifically mentioned that they are aligned with El Engandro del Inferno, but they're a separate entity. So, just for a little bit of clarification there, because obviously Hijo del Mephisto made it seem like, and this is this is in kayfabe, this isn't like I didn't intend this to happen, um, seem like it's one big group, and that's what maybe that's what he thinks, but uh, in the mind of at least Pesadilla, it's very clearly a separate entity. All right, we got a battle royal tonight, and it's going to be thirty. Well, it says man. It's going to be thirty-person battle royal. Ooh, battle royal. Thirty-person battle royal. Uh, take out Hijo del uh, Mephisto. Take out Tirador. Okay, he's not. He's already not in there. Take out Tres Phoenix. And take out Pesadilla. Silver Tiger can go in, Tricolor can go in, Slayer can go in. Ah, I guess we're going to have to put some of Tress Phoenix in there. Uh, which ones of Tress Phoenix should go in there, I wonder? Also, there's also yeah, Shadow Rider and La Sombra in there, even though they're champions. Oh, we could take out those two. Yeah, okay, that's what we're going to do. We will take out La Sombra and Shadow Rider, uh, Cosmic Rider, and we will put in Tress Phoenix. And tier door alpha. Right, so oh, yeah, don't want to have someone with a broken jaw in there. Definitely not the best idea at all. So let's take out Slayer and put in La Sombra. Perfect. Uh, 30 man battle royal. Gonna take up a decent chunk of the card. How much time do we have to give it? Uh, we can actually give it 10 minutes. I'm gonna give it 20. Uh, it's gonna be a number one contenders match for the Campeonatos del. Uh, Universal Ali, and uh, the winner, a new number one contender for the title, is going to be Gino Montero. That's right. Runner up is going to be Nicholas Lopez. Very close to getting another shot. Who's going to complain? Nobody's going to complain. They're like, yeah, Gino's the ace. Absolutely. Agree. Lol, Gino wins. Totally fine with it, brah. Don't worry about us. No complaints. Great decision, mate. Absolutely landed. Bouncing. Awesome. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we love Gino. We love Gino. Alright. I've been trying to indoctrinate them into loving Gino, and it finally happened. I'm so delighted. So we have uh, four workers not working yet. Slayer's got an injury, so we probably won't do anything with him. But we could do three matches to put the others over. And I think that's fair. So sure, let's do it. Let's hire Ajax the Skull Splitter. I mean, I assume it's pronounced Ajax if it's the same as the Dutch football team. So, yep. Sure, that's fine. Put him as a Technico. Enhancement talent. Cool. And we'll hire Blue Phantom. We like Blue Phantom. We've had Blue Phantom in a couple shows now. And how about... Secreto. Though she's a manager. Where is, uh... Yeah, Velvet Suarez is our usual resident uh, jobber. <laughs> And she can do women's division, I guess. Awesome. Sounds good to me. And uh, since they're squash matches, we'll go with just normal one-on-one. -on -one. No no Lucha Libre style match. Exclude booked. So we'll do Ajax versus Cosmic Rider. Uh, eight minutes. Do a story. Storytelling. And we'll go four minutes on it, actually. The whole reason why we're doing it is a one fall match is so that we can go under five minutes on these things. Then we will do... Uh, I will actually give Blue Phantom a try, I think. I'm going to do Pesadilla versus Velvet Suarez. 
and then just a regular squash. There we go. That's the uh, over. Uh, there we go. Oh, and this could be a high. No, no, this one shouldn't be a high spot smash actually. So there we go, and we will give old Phantom Blue, Blue Phantom, Azul. I think is the Spanish word for blue. A chance. We'll put him against the world champ. It'll be a 10 minute high spots match. Proper 2 out of 3 falls. Champ's obviously going to go over. Um, but we will see uh, how it does. If it does like a, if it does a C minus, let's say. If it does anything higher than a D plus. Then uh, I'll be very impressed. And he'll, a blue phantom will instantly get on my radar. Alright, looks good to me. We have 16 minutes. Is that... Yeah, that's enough. We only need to do... We only need to do two angles. I'd like to do more, but we only need to do two angles. Okay, so the first one... It's a pretty nice one. We'll do hee-ho. Uh, no, that's, that's a very... Oh, by the way, my keyboard is now in front of my mic. So you might hear more keyboard clicking, but it'll mean that this is a lot less painless. If you, I don't know if you noticed in the last couple of recording sessions... But I was very, I was struggling to type. It was very difficult because I have to like reach beyond my mic, and it was just not the best way of doing things. So hopefully, it's an overall net positive change. Although you may disagree, who knows? God, so many people in this. Yeah, okay, that, that's perfect. So he ho del Mephisto is backstage within hell, as we like to put him, uh, with his boys, and he's gonna cut the promo. Oh, this is. Oh yeah, okay. So he, yeah, it doesn't really. Matter. He's not gonna get success out of it, but his boys are. And uh, he's going to say that they were champions for a very, very long time. They were Trio's champions for a while. And uh, he believes that they deserve a rematch against Tress Phoenix at the big TV special at the end of the month. And, uh, yeah, th that's it. They were, uh, they're amazing. They are the, one of the best Trio teams that he's ever had the pleasure of working with. And they deserve a rematch. And we'll see if there's any response next week. Uh, we also have an appearance by North Star Jr., who will talk about Tirador Alpha and say, "I, uh, I'm not sure what's that. I'm gonna check something. Match history also involving Tirador Alpha. Oh, Kirk Jameson. Kirk Jameson. Cool. Cool. Yep. No, that's fine. So yeah, he's gonna say, I haven't had my rematch for the title yet. Uh, I believe I'm due one, and uh, I think we should have it at the TV special." Kirk? Uh, Kirk. Yeah, K hey, K hey, Kirk. No, uh, Theodore, what do you say? Give me my rematch. Um, and yeah, I can go. No, we'll put that a little later in the show. And then we will also have generic promo, singles promo, generic, from Gino. We will have generic singles promo from. These are just generic, like, unscripted, one-minute, like, I'm going to win the Battle Royal promos. Um, just talking, basically, about how they're going to win the Battle Royal. Hyping the Battle Royal up later in the night. and um, Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's a thing that happens quite a bit, especially. Not, not quite a bit, but it's a good way to establish character. Uh, I was going to do it with, like, a mid-carder. La Sombra. Eh. Yeah, okay, we'll do La Sombra. I like La Sombra, mainly because the real life La Sombra is, uh, is I'm, quite a, I'm quite a big fan. <laughs> Alright, so let's also do Custom Angle, Phoenix 1, uh, is, he, is he any good at anything? He's actually not too bad of a talker, I mean, obviously he's a great wrestler, I wasn't like, is he any good at anything? I mean, like, is he any good at any talking? So it's just right on my microphone. One minute, and I'm just announcing the Battle Royal, we'll say. So we'll put the, actually, we'll put that at the, no, that shouldn't be the start of the show. It'll be right after the show starts. And then, yeah, okay, that looks good to me. Let's do it! So, we, I'll, I'll talk through a bit more of the show as we run it through. So we open the show, uh, Hijo Del Mephisto t says his boys are the best, <coughs> great trios team, deserve a rematch, and they should have it at the next TV special against Tress Phoenix. Then Phoenix One announces a main event battle royal for the number one contendership to the main title. I like it. <clears throat> this wasn't bad. Cosmic Rider defeats Ajax the Skull Splitter in four minutes. Then a 78B as Nicholas Lopez says he's going to win the battle royal. <clears throat> a 50D uh, plus as Pesadilla defeats Velvet Suarez in about four minutes. 75B minus from La Sombra as he says he's going to win the battle royal. 
Uh, no, this wasn't bad at all. <clears throat> so we have a storyline between these two called One More Match. Uh, North Star Jr. says to Teodor Alpha, Hey, I haven't got my rematch. I want a shot at the Mexican title. What do you say? The semi-main event gets a 77B. Wow. Wow. So apparently Blue Phantom's debut, I guess that's debut m motivation. Um. Wow. <laughs> that, what, well. They, they like high, like, they like high spots here in Ole. Shit, man, that was ridiculous. And Gino cuts a promo saying he's going to win the Battle Royal. And nice. Gino wins the Battle Royal. In a good match, Gino Montero wins the Battle Royal in 19 minutes and 35, 38 seconds. The other members of the final four were Nicolas Lopez, Marcos Flores, and Mr. Lucha 3. That makes sense. Who, oh, I should, <laughs> I should probably, let's ignore that Mr. Lucha 3 was ever in this Battle Royal. Um, Greg Gage. Yes, storyline-wise, Mr. Lucha 3 was not in this Battle Royal. I apologize. That was a mistake. Mr. Lucha 3 sustained broken ribs. They they came off screen, okay? And Phoenix 4, who was always getting injured, sustained whiplash neck strain. Show overall... Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm aware. I'm fully aware. Uh-oh, backstage heat on Queen Amazon. No! Listen to me! He wasn't in the match! He wasn't! Gets a 79B... A B. Yeah, 79B increases their pop in all of Mexico. Alright, I actually like that I had all that planned out, or most of it planned out. I think it actually flowed a little better. Maybe I should do a little bit more of that in the future, planning planning things out. Hmm! <laughs> As coming from a man who criticizes, uh, who criticizes, um, WWE. Oh, half year awards, cool. So, uh, WWE for not planning ahead enough. Maybe I should plan things out a bit. We'll have a look through these, that's interesting. So, Steve DeCult is Wrestler of the Year so far. Not surprising. Uh, still as over in Canada as he ever has been. Super good. Oh, he's always oh, in time to climb. That selling is down from an A. Mm, 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 mm. What's his matches like? He's got oh my fuck, <laughs> fucking AI, damn you AI, and you're not having to worry about time decline and shit. God damn you, god damn you. Uh, company of the year so far is Pride. Not surprising. Pride are great. Team of the year so far is the Pride team. Uh, they're the youngsters, I think. They're the ones that always feud with Pride Koizo and I think Koizo, the the kid Double K. Uh, Match of the year so far is a is the freaking Ed Henson Cup freaking finals, which is cool. That's a cool main event to be the to be the match of the year. Was it a one hundred? Uh I was not sure of the year so far because that doesn't look like match of the year so far. Uh, maybe it is match. That's weird. I don't think you're correct there, game. Unless you're uh oh there it is there it is different match cool ninety nine shit here then. Show of the year so far was a Pride Show, Night of Fortitude. Young Wrestler of the Year so far goes to Hiho Del. Oh, um, Igila. I got a Agela. I'm never gonna be able to pronounce that word. I can't. There's a, the woman on the roster also has that in her name. Can't do it. Anyway, the norm, like the original version of this mask, is in our Hall of Fame. This is the second coming opener in Oli. Okay, uh, in South of the Border. Veteran Wrestler of the Year is Pride Guy. Female wrestler of the year is Brooke Tyler. Huh. She's in um, North of the Borders Women Division. She, I think she's champ to start. Huh. Well, she's really good. I love Brooke. I think she's awesome. I still got quite a way to go, though. Well, she's 22, so. Independent wrestler of the year so far is Lobo Blanco. Who we could hire. Should we give him a reward for his hard work by hiring him in for, uh, like, a job date? Uh, okay. Nice. That's pretty bad. How badly are you injured? Are you going to be back for the pay-per-view? Oh, he's worked me through it. <laughs> I, just, I was laughing at me, like, being like, are you going to be back for the pay-per-view? Um, don't really care about Phoenix 4. Even if he is injured, I can just do, it, like, angle stuff. He had that Diablo is re-signing for two years, and I'm re-signing North Star Jr. to a three-appearance, one-month contract. Uh, we finished first in the regional battle. We've lost Mascara del Puma. We've signed the one-night only deal with Blue Fire. I was like, I know we liked him. I know he did really well, but, like, come on. Oh, okay, it's Black Atlas, it's Black Atlas, they can't be like, okay. I was like, well, no, don't steal him from me. I was like, oh yeah, it's a Tory deal or paper appearance. Uh, Greg Gage is going to be a star. I, I, I think you might be right, Tiho. You may be correct on this one. 
Hence why we are pushing him a little, I believe. Yeah. I mean, I'm not pushing... Again, I've got a specific storyline purpose in mind for Mr. Gage. And it's not exciting. Don't get excited about it. Don't worry. He's here until he can has enough pop in Mexico to put on a decent match. Then he's going to do something and then leave. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. The rating. Did it, did it pop a 0.4? Oh, yeah, of course. I just... It's been a while since I've recorded, so I was like, do they pop a 0.4? And it's actually like we're getting like high fours for a while now. Which is great. I've, I've been... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, see? We are at uh, 38. We're, uh, once again, increasing one pop every month. Which is perfect. Two more months, hopefully, until we get pay-per-view. A wonderful, wonderful thing. We are making more... We are making more and more profit every month. Well, since we upped our production values. And took a massive nose I dive and also since the beta patch which reduced attendances so if you're wondering why that happened it's because in the beta or the demo sorry uh, attendances for all events were equal whereas now um, smaller events get smaller attendances uh, weekly events get smaller attendances so that's why things have gone down significantly lots of ticket sales in June though which is really good to see which is really good to see and obviously we, we didn't have TV revenue till then it's reasonable I mean, without it, we probably would have like we would have, we wouldn't have made nearly as much money that month. So, it's it's you know it's it's good to have. I'll say that much for for a fact. Um, we get less sponsorship money than say like. No, no, that's weird. Estimated sponsorship income is like eighty grand, and for some reason we're only getting like twenty. <laughs> oh. Okay, we're making money anyway, so it doesn't really matter what our sponsorship money is. And uh, yeah, let's see show costs. So. Huh. Oh, there it is. No, we didn't. What? Well, where did all the money go? Oh, yeah, of course. All the money went because of attendances. Of course. That makes sense. The money didn't drop because we upped our show costs. It barely made a difference. The money dropped because of the attendance fix. Okay. That's fine. I think the attendance fix is right. I think it's correct. I'm glad that we're getting close to 5,000 for these events and over 7,000 for these events. I think that's pro appropriate. Um, because back in the first couple of months, as you can see, uh, we were even getting less attendances for these big events, and theoretically this event, this big two-hour special with foreign stars, should definitely be getting a higher attendance than an hour match, where it's like, this is Lucha, guys. <laughs> Silver Tiger's like, Lopez, you know this is Lucha. <laughs> I, love, I like that we just stumbled across this event. Yeah, yeah, Lucha. Chess Maniac was in the building, defeated by freaking Phoenix 2, of all people. Uh, how is uh, Hiro doing after that amazing squash match? He's up to a... Ladies and gentlemen, we have got a B-plus player in the house. <laughs> and I like it. I like it a lot. Alright, thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you guys have enjoyed. It's been quite a long episode. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Oh, I'm loving it. This new set of recordings. I'm feeling energized. I'm feeling good. I thought this was a good episode. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time for another episode of Pola Noche Enfrentamiento. And I just realized, I think we actually have more shows than I was... No, no, I was right. No. Week one, week two, week three. Yeah, we actually have three shows. I thought we had... Uh, we, well, we have three shows and the one we recorded today. So we actually have four shows. So I have not paced the build out properly. So I'll just have to add a show. It'll be fine. We were squeezing things anyway. We might be able to build to a new, another match. Who knows? Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys next time for another episode of Pola Noche Enfrentamiento. Peace out, amigos. <laughs>